Buckaroo Bonsai. It's the latest issue. Usually it's a film with a very specific demo, you know, very specific fan base. It's time? I got nothing but time. Like Buckaroo. Buckaroo is a perfect kind, perfect cult film. I don't know that I got it exactly, but I knew that it wasn't, you know, your usual movie. It wasn't a usual narrative. It wasn't a TV narrative. It's way before its time. I mean, I think Mac Roush is a time traveler. I really do. Planet 10, how do you guys know that? It's all on the yellow record. Come on. Hey, Kiss Belinda. Reno. Yellow record. However. You don't tell Peter really what to do, because whatever you tell him, you know, he'll take that and incorporate it and make it 10 times better. I mean, I don't think I've ever worked with a smarter actor than him. Just a, just a really, he's as close to Buckaroo Banzai as you could get. Jeff, you just let run. Jeff is a master class in scene stealing. He would come in with a joke every day or some kind of something every day. And, uh, you know, my favorite was when he decided to uh, do the Maha Yaha routine from the Three Stooges. And, uh, and I would be, I would be, you know, stroked out curly. <laughs> and he said, just, I'll say maha, you say yaha, and then say nonsense words. And so we would do that all day on the set to the point, of, you know, everybody got, everybody got tired of us. But he's a, he's a great guy, great guy. I really loved him, really loved seeing him in anything he does too. There's no cooler persona than Pepe Serna. Well, you know. Maybe Billy. Maybe Billy Vera and Pepe were like, you know, they were battling it out for who was the coolest guy. Now, you set up the grid and uh, get the last known coordinates. Tommy, you hop on to Marconi and see if we got any blue blaze within a 10 minute radius. But no strike teams, Tommy, understand? All right, I'm headed downstairs. Keep everybody calm. Once we had these pieces, we thought Buckaroo needed some kind of muscle, right? Because after all, they are trying to save the world. And when Clancy came in, he had a, a wonderful kind of calmness about him, and he had a physical presence. And so we thought, well, okay, we need that. He was big and in shape, and so I kind of looked like a cowboy, and you know, they stuck a hat on me, and I was fine. We needed in Rawhide. Buckaroo's rock, this, you know, a complete anchor to all the madness that Buckaroo was kind of contending with all the time. And, and that's Clancy. I mean, he just, you were reassured when you were around him. He's, you know, when he's not shooting, he's sitting there reading some very interesting novel. I really loved Clancy. He was just, uh, there was a, such a warmth about him, you know. Uh, handsome, handsome dog, you know. <laughs> And yet you didn't feel any envy towards his, his ha handsomeness, you know. And he was just a warm-hearted guy, a big lug, you know. Clancy just has a, a, an ease about him, uh, and, a, and a, it's a confident ease. He's not pushing for anything, but he's got so much confidence and power inside what he does. He just has this kind of unique personality that draws you in where a lot of us are actors that smack you on the face with our performance. Clancy pulls you into him. Oh, man. This thing's a pack of mean wallop, huh? What are y'all looking at? The set dresser did amazing stuff. You know, there was always something on the set to play with. Probably the most creative design and set dressing movie I've ever been on because whatever popped into your head that might be appropriate you were able to put there. Those people probably had more input into character than anybody else because they would come up and say, hey, I put this little device and maybe you could play with that. In fact, there's a shot early in the film where Clancy Brown is looking at a little video that's on his belt and it's like a little monitor on the, on the end of a flexible arm that's attached to a box on his belt. And that was a Sony Watchman. It was one of the first little, little black and white, inch and a half black and white CRT thing. Subcutaneous microphones can allow the patient to transmit verbal instructions to his own brain. Like Dr. raise Bonsai's my left arm has or throw the harpoon. People are going to come from all over. This boy is an Eskimo. I was so thrilled to be back and with those dudes again. Um, it was fun. It didn't last long enough. And it was so strange also because it was at the end of the movie and my character had died and I'm like, why am I doing this? I mean, I was thrilled I was doing it because maybe it meant that I was going to come back for a sequel. The people that loved it really loved it and they were champions of it. I think they started 
uh, you know, on their own, they started this idea of the Blue Blazer regulars and were handing out, you know, membership cards to that. People who love Buckaroo judge people based on if they love Buckaroo or not. I miss those guys. If there was one time in my life that I could go back to, it would be making that movie.